Airbnb. Let me tell you a little story. I had a guy who was renting a car from me who was doing Uber Eats and DoorDash, who had not one, but two apartments on Airbnb. And when Airbnb gets to that level, like, let me go ahead and tell you what's about to happen or is about to start happening with Airbnb. There are a lot of people who are about to get hurt because right now it's the summer, uh, airlines are scrambling, people are going on vacation. But one of the things I have noticed that everyone has been piling into Airbnb. Um, if you go to Google YouTube search bar and you look up setting up an Airbnb uh, rental, you will see a lot of advice. And what I saw a lot of, which I don't think it's the best advice is to get an apartment or to get a house, go on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace and buy the furniture. And what you're going to set up is an average Airbnb experience. Now, once again, I may be a little different. I have never stayed in the Airbnb. Uh, I've only stayed in hotels. And I was talking to my girlfriend. She's never stayed in the Airbnb. Matter of fact, there is this event that's happening where she and some other girls are going to be staying for this uh, bridal party at an Airbnb. And it's like five, six hundred bucks a night. It's a huge property. And what's going to happen to the Airbnb market? Because there are so many people who are jumping in. And let me go ahead and tell you, there's the bottom of the Airbnb market, where someone who has a house is renting out a room in their house where they actually live. I don't think that there's a lot of people who are doing that. I had a 5,000 square foot house with three empty bedrooms upstairs. Uh, one of them, my assistant was her office. It never occurred to me to put those rooms on Airbnb. I had three rooms upstairs. I had this huge basement and I had five bathrooms. I had a bathroom off the master. I had a bathroom that was off the main level. There was two bathrooms upstairs and there was a bathroom down in the basement. So if I wanted to, I could have tricked out the basement and I could have tricked out the upstairs and rented those rooms on Airbnb easily if I wanted to. But let me tell you why it never occurred to me. I had no problem paying my mortgage, none whatsoever. Never even entered the back of my head to rent out rooms in my house where I stayed to strangers. Never occurred to me. And for the average person who's able to pay their rent or mortgage, they don't want to do that be bothered because you never know what you're going to get with a stranger. You could get a really cool person that you vibe with, or you could get someone that you literally just can't stand. You never know what you're going to get. So that's the bottom of the Airbnb market. And a lot of folks, because the inherent barrier of renting your room to someone you don't know is very unsavory. It's very distasteful to most people. Top of the Airbnb market. These are luxury experiences. These are uh, mansions. These are tricked out penthouses. These are luxury experiences. Like where my girlfriend's going, it's a beautiful place. They did not go to Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace to buy furniture. They got brand new furniture from the furniture store. And this place, I would say, just looking at it, it's one point one about 1.5 million. So the top of the Airbnb. All right. It is the 27th of July. You've got four days to get into intellectual property school. What are you waiting for? You're going to get home economics. You're going to get the uh, group. You're going to get so much. So go ahead 
and jump into the intellectual property school before the price goes up. That's all I've got to say. Jump into it. Stop waiting because the decisions that you make today will influence your life 10 years from now. So you want to start making better decisions and start activating. Because here's the thing. You think you got more time than you do. You've got a 35 year window to make your mark. People tell you like, oh, you can work to 40 years. No, most people waste their 20s and then they get serious around 35. So 35, 35, 45, 50, 60. You got 30, 35 years, man. 30, 35 years. That's what most people are operating with. And I'm here to tell you, when you get old, time starts zooming by zoom in so what you want to do is do yourself a solid and enroll in the intellectual property school where i'm going to teach you how to do all the things i do and we'll teach it to you from a beginning level perspective you know once again i can't come at you guys from the top i got to bring the information to you where you are so the intellectual property school is going to be for the rank beginner and once again i've had some people leave comments it's like i'm a musician and all this other stuff look i'm going to teach you what to do and what you're currently big be do, currently doing, it may not work. There are a lot of niches. It's damn near impossible to make money. And if you, and a lot of people, it's like, this is what I like to do. And it, it makes me happy. Great. But you ain't gonna make no money. Once again, I'm the real YouTuber. I don't tell you lies to get your money. I tell you the truth. So some of you are going to have to make adjustments and you're going to have to come off of whatever you're stuck on, because that's just not going to work. I'm going to teach you what works, how to work it and how to make that money. So go below. It's going to be in the description box or it's going to be in the first comment and go ahead and enroll in the intellectual property school today, man. Do it today. Don't waste another minute. Enroll in it today. The market, which is the unique experiences, the unique dwellings. That's really small because the inherent barrier to those things is you got to have some money to set up those kind of experiences. You, you gotta have the money. And let's talk about 80% of Airbnb. These are average rental experiences. These are someone who's got together enough money or have good enough credit where they got an additional house and they just slap some Craigslist furniture or they slap some um, Facebook marketplace furniture in there. There is nothing distinctive. There's nothing remarkable. Um, once again, I have never stayed in the Airbnb. And one of the reasons I have never stayed in the Airbnb is I am a luxury type person. Like where I live right now, this tricked out is very nice. There's art on the walls. So I'm not going to stay someplace that is terribly dissimilar from where I live. Um, when I stay in the hotel, four star as low as I go. I stay in a four or five star hotel. So for me and people like me, we're not going to stay in some average, regular Airbnb that's with a bad mattress. Because one of the things, like if I was going to do Airbnb, I would move to the top of the market and I would trick out the place. I would make it unique. I would make it special. I would make it memorable. And I would probably spend about twenty-five to $30,000 furnishing it. I wouldn't go with low uh, grade or, um, I, I just wouldn't. I would get the nicest furniture for the nicest abode because I was having a conversation with a real estate investor and he and I were really similar. I would not rent a place that I would not stay. And not to say that, you know, if you live in the mansion and you're renting out um, an extended stay hotel, I'm not saying that is bad. That's just something that I personally wouldn't do. I would not rent a place that I would not stay. So, you know, we had that conversation. So that market, that 80% of average, nothing special, regular Airbnbs, is about to get crushed. Why? Competition. Competition. That's where most of the Airbnb market is. That's where most of the Airbnb hosts are, are regular, non-distinct, regular rentals. And they're about to get crushed. Crushed, crushed, crushed. 
because it's already happening that, you know, I've looked at some people who do Airbnb and their, 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 their rental rates have slowed down. And as this recession rages on, as the global reset rages on, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Now, here's the thing. Top of the market is probably going to stay the same or it may even increase because, right, you know, I'm a member of that group of people who's not impacted by the recession. I'm not impacted by the global reset. Uh, the other day I actually got gas and I actually looked at the meter. Gas was 539 for premium. I think it actually has come down a little bit because I think at one point it was 599. So for me, I'm still going to travel. I'm going to still do things. I am not going to be impacted. So that marketplace, and if you're renting out a house, you want to rent to someone in that category because they're going to be less impacted by the recession, less impacted by layoffs. Because, you know, like I said, I did a video. There's a guy who's going to come out of college. He's going to be making $150,000 because he has the right skill sets. So people in that group are not going to be impacted. But that, that middle, middle Airbnb market, that's for regular folk, which will greatly be impacted. And if you're one of those people who's went out and did rental arbitrage, mm, mm, mm. the first wave of people who did that when Airbnb bookings completely just stopped, a lot of people were on the hook for multiple rent for multiple apartments. There's a lot of people because when the pandemic started, they now have bad credit. <laughs> so I was listening to uh, some people who uh, are deep in Airbnb and all of them have the same consensus. They are not for rental arbitrage because you don't get the tax benefits. You don't get the equity buildup. You don't get the appreciation. You don't, there's so many things that when you do rental arbitrage and if you're not familiar with rental arbitrage is what you do is you go find a landlord that will allow you to place that property on Airbnb and you would pay them whatever they want per month and then you would make the Airbnb money and whatever's above and beyond your rent is what you get to keep. Uh, I feel that that business model Unless you're in a vacation hotspot, like if you do that next to Disneyland, you might be okay. But if you just do that in a regular market, like Oklahoma City, um, you might have some problems. You might have some problems because I am seeing this with Toro. There's a guy, Lucky Lopez, he has a YouTube uh, automotive life. He changed the name to his name, Lucky Lopez. And there are so many people who are coming off Toro. There are so many people like so many people coming off hire car and the people who financed their cars are in a world of doo doo. They're in a world of hurt because you now are on the hook for that financial obligations doesn't matter that your business model doesn't matter that your business model didn't work out. These institutions and banks still want their money. So this is the situation you're in. If you're doing re rental arbitrage, it's very risky. It's very dangerous because long as the market is high, you know, with the STEMI ballers. And I talked about this at the beginning of the pandemic two years ago. I said it was not a good idea to pay people all of this money, enhanced unemployment, the stimulus checks, because what it did, and there was a certain group of population where with the enhanced unemployment, they were making more money than they ever made in their life. So what did these people do? They went out and start buying stuff based on this artificial income. Uh, I remember a restaurant I used to go to, literally, if I wanted to go there, I would like go online and reserve a spot an hour to an hour and a half ahead of time because the place was so busy. All these restaurants were busy because of that stimulus money, that stimulus money. 
And once that stimulus money left the economy, a lot of these people, and this is really, really like, once again, you know my policy on financing cars. I just don't think it's a good ideal. And you have these stimulus ballers out here who are financing cars because now they have this artificially raised income. And now they're, you know, the average car note blew my mind. The average car note in America is like 700 bucks a month. That blew my mind. I was like, really? I remember having a car payment of $250. And that kind of hurt because I was an E4 in the military and I was only making like 1400 bucks a month. So I felt that because my car payment was 250 and my insurance was 250 because I was young. So that took up a large proportion of my income. And I noticed when I got that car that I didn't have as much free disposable cash as I used to. It was really, really interesting. So you, you have a lot of people who have positioned themselves for failure and they've positioned themselves to be, to, to come down because this market in Airbnb is literally going to be obliterated as things slow down, as people have money. And because once again, competition, like with my business, I have no competition. I, I have an inherently built in moat because there's very few people. I'm not the only one who's lived this experience. I'm not the only one that started holding companies, not the only one, but there is a small pool of people with this esoteric knowledge. So I really don't have any competition. And at the bottom of the Airbnb market, not a lot of competition because, and also a lot of people don't want to rent and stay with someone they don't know. So that part of the Airbnb is still working. And these are people who are renting out of necessity because it's cheaper than the hotel room. That's who's that's aimed at, but in the top of the market, but that middle market is about to be obliterated. And what, once again, and I talked about this in a previous video, you're going to see a lot of those Airbnb properties hit the market and they're going to hit the market as the market is going down. Uh, a lot of these people should have sold their houses when the market was high and when they put their house on the market and they would literally have bidding wars. That's when they should have sold their house. Anyone who held onto their house and they're, they're doing Airbnb, they're starting to see their bookings get lower and lower and lower every month. And they're going to get to a point where their bookings are not going to pay that mortgage. And that's when the doo doo, that's the pucker moment. That's the pucker moment that's coming for a lot of these, Airbnb host and literally how many of these uh, YouTube personalities, these Instagram personalities, the TikTok personalities, Airbnb, Airbnb, get your, everyone was pushing Airbnb. So you have so many people who are not business people, who are not business people who got into the Airbnb market and they treated it like a hobby and it's about to bite them in the booty. Cause like I said, you know, I know someone who was doing Airbnb and they started liquidating their properties like a year ago because they saw the slowdown. It, it, it just wasn't what they thought. And it was a lot more work than a lot of these Airbnb YouTubers and TikTokers and Instagram people let on. Cause it was like, you know, they were always answering questions and it, it, it was just a hassle. Now, my friends who did the Airbnb, they got out clean because they sold at when the housing was stupid. When, you know, some of the houses they bought, one house they bought like eight months prior, the house had appreciated $50,000. So they was able to sell that house, pay the real estate agents and put money in their pocket. But a lot of people who are starting that, who are gonna sell in the future, they're about to get screwed. They're about to get screwed. And this is why I have railed and ran it and railed against template businesses. Because with Airbnb, you have a lot of competition in the average Airbnb rental experience. A ton of competition. You have a ton of competition on Toro. You have a ton of competition. Well, higher car. I don't know what's on higher car because I haven't looked lately. And you have a ton of competition with Amazon FBA. The amazing selling machine, which was a course for Airbnb, not Airbnb, but uh, Amazon FBA used to sell for like six, $7,000. I recently checked 
The price of that course now is now 2900 They've cut the price. You won't want to cut the price because sales have slowed down because in my opinion, Amazon FBA is thoroughly saturated. If you don't have 20 to $40,000 to start participating in the, Airbnb, the uh, Amazon FBA place, you don't have a chance, not today. I remember when you could have literally started selling you stuff and within the year got up to six figures with, Air, with uh, Amazon FBA. You can't do that anymore. It's just too much competition. And I mean real competition. Like you, you put some up on Amazon, you put it up for 25 bucks. Someone may put it up for 22 and then someone else may put it up for 21 and someone else may put it up for 18. That's the kind of competition that you're dealing with. And this is, and also with the template businesses, I feel that at some point Airbnb is going to be saturated. And also once again, for me, you know, please put it in the comments. How many of you stay in Airbnbs? How many of you routinely stay in Airbnbs? Like I have never stayed in the Airbnb. Just haven't, you know, last few trips I took, I stayed in the hotel. Now I do remember that when I was at Vid Summit, I met these people from London who were staying in the Airbnb, but it was like five of them in this place was like 700 bucks a night but for five people to stay in the hotel, they would have been paying more to stay in the hotel. But I do remember, cause they booked it and it was a lot further away than they thought it was. And I remember the chick was talking about she had to drive because I, I think it took them 45 minutes to get to uh, Vid Summit where the event was held. So like I said, but once again, that wasn't a normal Airbnb experience. Uh, there's a YouTuber by the name of Shelby Church. She bought an Airbnb, a house for Airbnb and it literally took her 17 months to get it ready to put on Airbnb. So she bought this house. She was paying the mortgage on it and she was paying the renovation costs. It had a heated pool and it, it is a luxury experience Airbnb. And I feel like that market is going to be way more durable and sustainable than that middle market, which is, I mean, it's about to be ugly. It's about to be ugly. Cause you've got people, average people who've got their credit score to the point where they can go out and get them an additional property put on their Airbnb. And for the undercapitalized, this is going to be an economic nightmare because you got this house and depending on what market you're in, like if you're in the market where the housing prices are still stupid, you might be able to get out and not be touched. You might be able to, to, to leave, but a lot of people about to get hurt. A lot of people about to get hurt. And th this is one of the reasons that I, you know, I got a video coming up on the corporate game. Like when you start a non template business, you don't have no competition in today's market, man, you really don't have no competition because these people don't want to work. I mean, like today, like, I was sitting back thinking about some other stuff that I can do because, you know, um, I'm getting ready to do the art of holding consulting business. Why? No competition. There are very few people who are qualified who actually have holding companies at my level. Now on the corporate level, you have uh, Alphabet, you have Johnson and Johnson, you have Berkshire Hathaway. These are multi-billion dollar corporations at that level. And they have a room full of attorneys and CPAs to work on their corporation. But at the personal level, I'm it. I am the only one that's doing this. I'm the only one that I know of because I have done some research and I'm quite sure there's some other people who have holding companies, but they're not deep with it. And I'm getting ready to get deep with it because I have an economic moat. Number one, like once again, I just filed my taxes and I have saw information online that I know is false because I actually filed my taxes. Do you understand that the internal revenue service is set up for holding companies? That's in the tax code. It, they're set up for it. They're set up for it, which tells me a lot. 
I didn't have to, I had no problems doing it. it you know, once again, I had all my paperwork, I had all my uh, 1099s. Once again, uh, I'm getting ready to do some different kind of stuff because I just have no competition. None. There is nobody with my skill sets on the internet. There's, you know, like, uh, there's, there's a whole bunch of people who like talk about turning credit to cash, <laughs> which is a horrible ideal. It's a horrible ideal. And I'm going to actually create a course on how you can really turn credit to cash because there, there's things I know there's things I have done that I can teach, but it's going to be different than what everyone else is talking about. So look for that because one of the things that you've got to know is how things operate and you've got to know how things um, are set up. And one of the things that, you know, it, it, it's just, it's going to get real deep. It's going to get real, real deep. And I'm going to teach you how to safely turn credit into cash and how to set up yourself where you, you protect yourself. Because a lot of this stuff, like, once again, um, hold on a second. These are my personal credit cards, right? I would not. I would not liquidate any of these cards. And, you know, like I said, I've got probably $750,000 in personal credit. I can probably liquidate 100K and my credit score would not drop a lot. It would drop, once again, it would drop, but it wouldn't drop a lot. I would still be in the 700s, but if I liquidated 250 my credit score would get to the 600s so i would never ever ever liquidate my personal credit would never do it never never do it so there's a lot of people who are teaching you stuff because that's all they can do they haven't done anything at a high level and you know to pat myself on the back I was unaware of what these people were doing because I don't watch them. Like, once again, if you're not really interesting or something or something I need, I don't watch your YouTube content or I don't know what these folks are doing. I'm too busy working on my shit. I have no clue what they're doing, but I kind of peeped at some stuff and I was just sitting there because once again, I have 23 years of entrepreneur experience. And I look at things a little differently than the average person. So once again, look for that course on how to turn credit to cash. And uh, I'm going to school you up. I'm going to, you know, it, it's, it's going to be different. It's going to be really different. And if you've already bought something, you will get this new information at a dramatic discount if you already bought some. So if you're already in the ecosystem, you will be rewarded. But yeah, this Airbnb thing is about to be nasty very very nasty all right it is the 27th of july you've got four days to get into intellectual property school what are you waiting for you're going to get home economics you're going to get the uh group you're going to get so much so go ahead and jump into the intellectual property school before the price goes up that's all I've got to say. Jump into it. Stop waiting because the decisions that you make today will influence your life 10 years from now. So you want to start making better decisions and start activating. Because here's the thing. You think you got more time than you do. You've got a 35 year window to make your mark. People tell you like, oh, you can work to 40 years. No, most people waste their 20s. And then they get serious around 35. So 35, 35, 45, 50, 60. You got 30, 35 years, man. 30, 35 years. That's what most people are operating with. And I'm here to tell you, when you get old, 
time starts zooming by, zooming. So what you want to do is do yourself a solid and enroll in the intellectual property school where I'm going to teach you how to do all the things I do and we'll teach it to you from a beginning level perspective. You know, once again, I can't come at you guys from the top. I got to bring the information to you where you are. So the intellectual property school is going to be for the rank beginner. And once again, I, I've had some people leave comments. It's like, I'm a musician and all this other stuff. Look, I'm going to teach you what to do and what you're currently baby currently doing. It may not work. There are a lot of niches. It's damn near impossible to make money. And if you and a lot of people, it's like, this is what I like to do. And it, it makes me happy. Great. But you ain't gonna make no money. Once again, I'm the real YouTuber. I don't tell you lies to get your money. I tell you the truth. So some of you are going to have to make adjustments and you're going to have to come off of whatever you're stuck on because that's just not going to work. I'm going to teach you what works, how to work it and how to make that money. So go below. It's going to be in the description box or it's going to be in the first comment and go ahead and enroll in the intellectual property school today, man. Do it today. Don't waste another minute. Enroll in it today.